a patriotic theme for the show this week. We're talking about bourbon barrels, capitalism and voting, and a beer inspired by our first president. I am your host, Chris Hardy, and this is the Straight Beer News for the week of October 2nd, 2016. So first, let's start off by talking about bourbon barrels. I'm talking about the bourbon barrels that are used by Goose Island Brewery. Goose Island started doing a bourbon barrel county stout uh, back in the beginning of 2004. And uh, they've been launching these uh, bourbon barrel county stouts regularly every year uh, ever since. And they've grown and grown in popularity, such to the point that people start anticipating what are the bourbon barrel beers that are coming out of Goose Island on any given year. This week they announced that there will be four variants of the popular Bourbon County Stout. First there will be the Bourbon County Stout Original, a Bourbon County Stout Barley Wine, a Bourbon County Stout Coffee Stout, and a Bourbon County Stout Proprietors Edition, which is only going to be available in the Chicagoland area. In addition with this announcement, they also decided that they would release the fact that they are going to begin pasteurizing their bourbon barrel beers. Uh, this comes as a result of last year's beers, that's the 2015 versions, being infected and providing an off taste for consumers. Uh, it appeared that some microorganisms had infected the beer uh, unannounced to the brewery, so multiple numbers of batches had to be recalled and refunds or exchanges had to be uh, delivered. Uh, it was kind of a, a PR black eye or a shock for the uh, Chicago Brewery, which was purchased a few years back by Anheuser-Busch. Uh, kind of led to um, beliefs or thoughts that, or maybe that this was evidence to support those people who thought that quality went down with craft beers after purchases by Anheuser-Busch. That kind of just fed um, flame or fed fuel to that flame. The brewery said that they will be using a flash pasteurization process in order to pasteurize these beers. Now, what that means is the pasteurization is the process that would kill any of those bacteria that may be in any beer, thus limiting the the yeast or any other kind of organism that could be there that would provide those off flavor tastes. The Bourbon County beers will be available starting this year on Black Friday. That's November 25th, 2016, the day after Thanksgiving. So look for those uh, after that point. It appears AB InBev and SAB Miller have crossed over that last hurdle that they need to finalize their acquisition, or I guess the acquisition of AB InBev of SAB Miller. Now that hurdle was a vote put to the shareholders that was held this week. Now a little bit of history on this acquisition if you're not familiar. It was announced a little around a year ago by the board of SAB Miller that they suggested a, an approval by the shareholders of this acquisition. The purchase is going to be an amount of 103 billion US dollars. So since there has been a year since the announcement was originally made of the acquisition, many steps have had to get uh, passed through in order to be approved by regulatory offices. Those would include SAB Miller having to sell off certain parts of its portfolio to avoid anti any antitrust regulatory red tape. So that means that in Europe, the Peroni and Grolsch brands had to be sold from SCB Miller to Asahi, which is a Japanese group. Here in America, they had to sell off their Miller Coors joint venture that they held with Molson Coors. They had 58% of that joint venture, and that stake had to be sold to Miller Coors, or to Molson Coors, who is now going to be the 100% um, owner of those brands. In addition, after the Brexit vote results, and the subsequent tanking of the euro to US dollar. Um, Anheuser-Busch decided that a, that a share price of 44 euros wasn't gonna be sufficient for the shareholders to approve. So in July of this summer, they increased that price from 44 to 45 euros per share. So for the vote that was held this week, there were two steps that had to be approved. The first threshold required a simple majority of stockholders to approve the 
acquisition. This seemed like it would be a shoe-in since the two primary shareholders, the Atria Group and the Santo Domingo family of Colombia, hold 40% in total number of shares. Now the, the second threshold is a threshold of percent by total value and more than a majority was needed for this. 75% is the threshold needed and this was apparently very easily achieved as the reports were 95.5% of total value shareholders uh, approved of the deal. We expect the deal to be totally complete uh, and uh, to take effect in October 10th, later this month. Lastly, on our tour of uh, Americana, what could be more representative of America than presidential elections, or presidential debates, or our first president, George Washington? Well, as it would happen, the first presidential debates were this week and on Monday. And outside of the de debates was a hospitality tent, which featured a beer by Blue Point Brewing. The debates were held on Long Island in New York, and they decided to feature one of their own. The Blue Point Brewery is from Long Island, and they decided to feature a patriotic beer this week, uh, one that was called Colonial Ale. Now, their Colonial Ale is new, and it is a take on a recipe written by George Washington back in 1757. It was found in President Washington's uh, military journal, and the page is on display for the public in the New York Public Library. The beer recipe itself seemed very vague and it didn't have um, measurements or weights or very great description of the beer itself. It was called a small beer, which is something that we might compare to a, a session ale today. So because the recipe itself didn't seem to be too detailed, it did mention um, oats to your liking. It also mentioned molasses. There were no mention of hops. Blue Point Brewing uh, did a little bit of research and found that most likely George Washington would have used things that would have been around him native to his home uh, in Virginia, such as spruce tips, most likely. Uh, they also researched the molasses, and it's not the kind of molasses that we're familiar with today, the brown syrupy stuff. This would have been a light-colored type of a molasses, which may have been a byproduct from the rum trade. Their recipe, or their concoction of their of this beer, they used a light colored molasses and spruce tips as a way to kind of make it more to the original beer, as George Washington might have intended it to be. The beer was only available during the debates. Uh, it's currently also in, available in their tap room. And it sounds like they have a plan to release it on Election Day, so on November 8th of this year. Um, we should start seeing some Colonial Ale by Blue Point if their distribution reaches you. Now before I go, I do have one more American-themed uh, discussion point, if you don't mind. This would be about America and beer and a festival. This week we'll host the 35th Annual Great American Beer Fest. Uh, which will be held in Denver, Colorado. It's uh, three days long, so it'll be from the 6th through the 8th. And just uh, if you're not familiar with what this is, it's a large festival, large gathering, um, obviously happens annually, where brewers, large and small, and beer fans of all types, all from all across the world, come to the fest to partake in different kinds of beers that might not be accessible to them at their home. And it also provides brewers an opportunity to do something new and provide um, a, a new flavor, a new beer uh, to their consumers and to those who are attending. They expect this year's event to have over 3,800 different beers, ranging from any type of 96 different beer styles, and over 800 breweries. So that will be this week. I don't know if I'll have any news stories about that yet for next week since it'll be just fresh off the end, but I hope to have some details and maybe some more information comes as a result of the Beer Fest later on. So that'll do it for this week. And if you're like me and you get tired of the rehashing of the news day in and day out, this week was uh, the debates, um, rehashing that over and over again and spinning it one way and the next. Come to me for the news that really matters at the end of your week. That's the beer news, of course. Subscribe to my channel, Straight Beer News. I am your host, Chris Hardy. 
If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can reach out on Twitter, um, where I'm at Straight Beer. I'm also on Instagram and Untapped. Uh, you can join me there. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up or comment in the comment section below. Also, links to any of the stories that I, we discussed today are going to be in the comment section below or in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Take care. Thank you.